This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at naming halogenoalkanes. Halogenoalkanes are alkanes in which one or more hydrogen atoms have been replaced with halogen atoms. The halogens are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Here we can see some examples of halogenoalkanes. In each example, we can see that the hydrogen atom of an alkane has been replaced with a halogen atom. From left to right, we have a chlorine atom, an iodine atom, and the last two molecules contain bromine atoms. So next we look at how to name halogenoalkanes. The root of the name is based on the longest carbon chain that contains the halogen atom. So in this table on the right, we can see the number of carbon atoms in the longest chain containing the halogen atom and the root or stem. One carbon atom is methane, two is ethane, three is propane, four butane, five pentane, and six hexane. The halogen atom defines the halo prefix. So if the halogen is fluorine, the prefix is fluoro. If it's chlorine, chloro, bromine, bromo, and iodine, iodo. And finally, the longest carbon chain is numbered to give the halogen atom the lowest possible number. So next, we look at some examples. So we'll start by naming the compounds at the top, which only contain one carbon atom. So from left to right, we have fluoromethane, chloromethane, bromomethane, and iodomethane. Next, we'll name the compounds at the bottom, which have two carbon atoms in the longest chain. So from left to right, we have fluoroethane, chloroethane, bromoethane, and iodoethane. In the next examples that we'll look at, we have to use numbers to show the position of the halogen atom in the compound. So if we start with the two molecules on the left, which are structural isomers. On the left, the longest carbon chain that contains the halogen atom is three carbon atoms. The molecule on the left has the bromine atom on carbon number one, therefore this molecule is named 1-bromopropane. The molecule on the right has the bromine atom on carbon number two, therefore this is named 2-bromopropane. Next, we look at the two examples on the right, which both have three carbon atoms in the longest chain that contains the halogen atom. The molecule on the left has an iodine atom bonded to carbon number one, and the molecule on the right has an iodine atom bonded to carbon number two. So these compounds are named 1-idopropane and 2-idopropane. Next, we look at these two compounds, which both have four carbon atoms in the longest chain that contains the halogen atom. The molecule on the left has a chlorine atom bonded to carbon number one, and the molecule on the right has a chlorine atom bonded to carbon number two. Therefore, these compounds are named 1-chlorobutane and 2-chlorobutane. The next compounds that we look at have multiple halogen atoms. In these examples, the halogen atoms are the same, but in the next slide, we'll look at examples where they are different. So for these examples, we'll use the prefixes di, tri, and tetra. Our first example has two carbon atoms with a bromine atom attached to each. So this compound is named 1,2-dibromoethane. Our next example has three carbon atoms in the longest chain. Two of the carbon atoms are bonded to chlorine atoms. So this compound is named 1,2-dichloropropane. Our next example has four carbon atoms in the longest chain, with two of the carbon atoms bonded to fluorine atoms. One fluorine atom is bonded to carbon number one, and the other is bonded to carbon number three. Therefore, this compound is named 1,3-difluorobutane. The next example has five carbon atoms in the longest chain. Three of the carbon atoms are bonded to chlorine atoms. They are carbon number one, carbon number two, and carbon number four. So this molecule is named 1,2,4-trichloropentane. And the last example in this slide has six carbon atoms in the longest chain. Carbon number three and carbon number four are both bonded to two bromine atoms. So this compound is named 3,3,4,4-tetrabromohexane. Next, we'll look at examples where there are two or more halogen atoms 
but this time the halogen atoms are different. So in our first example we have two carbon atoms in the longest chain and one carbon atom is bonded to a bromine atom and the other is bonded to a chlorine atom. When naming these compounds we need to consider the alphabetical order of the halogen atoms. So first is bromine, second is chlorine, third is fluorine and last is iodine. So in this compound we're going to number this carbon 1 and this carbon 2. So that the bromine atom is on carbon number 1 and the chlorine atom is on carbon number 2. Therefore the name of this compound is 1-bromo-2-chloroethane. In our next example we have two carbon atoms in the longest chain with one carbon atom bonded to a fluorine atom and the other bonded to an iodine atom. So in terms of numbering the carbon atoms, this carbon atom will be number 1 and this carbon atom will be number 2. This is because fluorine is given priority over iodine because F comes before I in the alphabet. So this compound is named 1-fluoro-2-iodoethane. In our next example we have three carbon atoms in the longest chain with one carbon atom bonded to a bromine atom and another carbon atom bonded to a chlorine atom. So we'll number the carbon atoms starting from this carbon which is carbon number 1, carbon number 2 and carbon number 3. Therefore this compound is named 1-bromo-3-chloropropane. In the next compound we have four carbon atoms in the longest chain with one carbon atom bonded to a bromine atom, another bonded to an iodine atom and another bonded to a chlorine atom. So when naming this compound there's two things that we need to consider. The first is the alphabetical order of the halogen atoms. The second is that we have to use the lowest possible numbers for the position of the halogen atoms. So if we start numbering the carbon atoms from this end of the molecule, the name would be 4-bromo, 2-chloro, 3-iodobutane. And if we start numbering from this end of the molecule, the name will be 1-bromo, 3-chloro, 2-iodobutane. So this is the correct name of the compound because this gives us the lowest possible numbers. In the last example on this slide we have five carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain. One carbon atom is bonded to a bromine atom, another is bonded to a fluorine atom and another is bonded to a chlorine atom. So if we start numbering from this end of the molecule the name would be 4-bromo, 2-chloro, 3-fluoropentane. And if we start numbering from this end of the molecule, the name will be 2-bromo, 4-chloro, 3-fluoropentane. So this is the correct name of the compound because this gives us the lowest possible numbers. The last examples that we'll look at are branched halogenoalkanes. When naming these compounds, we need to consider the alphabetical order of the halogens as well as the alkyl groups which are the branches. We also need to consider naming the compound using the lowest possible numbers. In our first example we have three carbon atoms in the longest chain with one carbon atom bonded to a bromine atom and another bonded to a methyl group. So this is carbon number 1, this is carbon number 2 and this is carbon number 3. Therefore the name of this compound is 1-bromo-2-methylpropane. In the next example there are four carbon atoms in the longest chain. One carbon atom is bonded to an iodine atom and another is bonded to a methyl group. So this is carbon number 1, this is carbon number 2, carbon number 3 and carbon number 4. So the name of this compound is 2-iodo-3-methylbutane. In our next example we have five carbon atoms in the longest chain with one carbon atom bonded to a chlorine atom and also to a methyl group. In alphabetical order C comes before M so this compound is named 3-chloro-3-methylpentane. In our last example we have four carbon atoms in the longest chain. One carbon atom is bonded to a bromine and a methyl group. Another carbon atom is bonded to a chlorine and another methyl group. So this compound is named 2-bromo-3-chloro-2-3-dimethylbutane.